Hey everybody and welcome back to my learning space. Sometimes I get questions like how to use scales and how to apply scales in code progressions. And I always find myself getting to the topic of licks, quote unquote licks, phrases that have been said in the jazz language, part of the jazz lineage. A lick is kind of like a quote. It's like if someone says in English, better late than never or the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. These are phrases that have been passed down and sort of make up the overall language and the understanding of the language. You know, without them, it, the phrasing and the language can kind of seem a bit bland. So I've compiled some licks from the jazz language uh, and a lot of these licks, especially the beginner ones, I'll be taking from Charlie Parker because he is said to be the pioneer of the bebop, bebop language and when you look at a lot of his uh, melodies in his songs, it's pretty much the jazz language that many other artists after him have kind of said it, have said the same lines um, in exactly the same format or sometimes adapted. It's particularly useful because it helps you see how the artists of the time and of the language applied certain scales and certain arpeggios in a specific way. It's really smart lines and they really have, a lot of them have a really strong harmonic pull. So I've separated these licks into beginner section, intermediate and advanced. And let's get started. The first three licks are taken from the song Donna Lee by Charlie Parker. <laughs> I'll have to say out of the nine licks that I've compiled today, these are like the bare minimum that one should know. Ones that will be really useful. Most of these happen over two five. In any case, they always seem to target the five. So that's the first one. This happens over a dominant chord. We have, it starts on the third of the dominant, comes down to the five. 7, flat 7, 1, and then it does an altered resolution by way of flat 9 and sharp 9. So. Of course you can end this however you want. The second lick is I believe it's called a honeysuckle. And you know with these licks you want to take them through. And the third lick is the most legendary one <laughs> of them all. And um, it's simply this one. This, this is one of the licks that, you know, we all kind of had to learn at some point. So it goes from the 3, 5, flat 7 to 9 arpeggio of the uh, dominant chord. You can also re resolve it like that. For the intermediate licks, I've chosen to do two licks from Sunny Clock and one lick of Bud Powell. Let's start with the Bud Powell one. And this is taken off of the song Ornithology, which I believe is also a Parker tune, but it was Bud Powell's version. It sort of forces the chord five to be a sharp five, so it's a kind of an altered five lick. The second lick is taken from Sonny Clark's album entitled Leapin' and Loppin', and from the and it's taken from the song called Something Special. Really something special. These two tunes happen over minor two five ones. So how about we take the key of D minor? That means it'll be E half diminished, A seven sharp five, and why don't we make it a D minor six? That always sounds nice in the minor key. In the original, I think he, he actually lands on the major seven, but I've chosen to land on the six just because I like the six. You can do that. 
the second sunny clock lick and the third floor for this intermediate section And now for the advanced section. Here I tried to focus a little bit more on, I guess, would you call it outside playing? I don't know if you'd call it outside playing, but it's playing a half step above. By the way, if you're wondering what I'm doing in my left hand, I'm mostly using root third seventh for all of these, for the two fives, root third seventh, root third seventh. And for these minor two fives, also root third seventh but i'm adding the flat and fifth because we have a flat a minor flat five so which means that the five is altered and the flat five would need to be in there because it's adding a specific color um, um for these minor voicings i tend to like to use rootless left hand voicings in a in a two five minor it's almost always a sharp five root third seventh the sharp five works perfect to the minor i have three six and nine for this next one the left hand voicings will get a bit more complicated and so will these lines first one is taken off of mccoy tyner's recording called blues for gwen so for the last section i'm going to pick i'm going to use the key of e flat major just because i like the range of e flat major a two five in the key of e flat minor e flat major um, I will first go to F sharp minor, B7, F minor, B7. So we would have... Let me do it lower the side. Now here I'm using the B7's voicing, B7, B7 rootless left hand voicing to B flat 7 voicing. Of course you could also do the whole 2-5 voicing like that. Okay, but I don't know if you'll have time to do that. Could also make use of fourth vo minor fourth vo minor fourth voicing. The second lick is also a McCoy tiny lick, and it's taken from the live version of him playing "Have You Met Miss Jones." I really like this one it actually it's the same it's exactly the same concept but the way in which you did it here is pretty nice so uh, have you met Mr. Jones it's kind of like a rhythm changes a little bit in the beginning so what it does is So, lots of patterns. So for the E flat major, he uses a C minor pattern. And then when he goes the second time, he launches himself into F sharp minor. kind of slide his way into F minor so and the third lick is by uh, Mr. Mal Grumilla. Um this one I actually got off of YouTube it was a I don't know if it was a YouTube class or master class and um, he was talking about all the things you are and he did he was improvising over it. and he did like a really nice half whole diminished idea which is actually very prominent in um a lot of jazz records because something like this it's based off of the half whole diminished scale which so i'll do it in the key of i'll stick to this key of e flat major 
so which means we would have to target the diminished scale here on this B flat 7 chord which would be and uh, it happens over the 2 5 so started on the ninth of F minor we can also start it on the eleventh uh, or I guess you could say it's the tonic of chord five 